Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to change SQL Server port. And in this demo, we'll be learning how to configure SQL Server static port and how to configure SQL Server to listen to a particular dynamic port. Uh, keep in mind that uh, if dynamic port is defined zero in SQL Server um, uh, configuration manager then it, SQL Server have a tendency to pick any dynamic port for it to use but maybe we don't want it to happen we can define our own dynamic port in case if we want SQL Server to use a particular dynamic port to listen to and uh, basically uh, the recommended is that uh, in production environment you should always have SQL Server static port defined uh, right here and that's what we're gonna learn first and then we're gonna go ahead and define our dynamic port on our own if we do want our SQL Server to listen on dynamic port so in order to change SQL Server port you need to go into the server where SQL Server is installed and go in SQL Server configuration manager in my case I'm gonna go ahead I have SQL Server installed on this machine so I'm going to go ahead and go in SQL Server configuration manager which is SQL Server 2014 configuration manager right here and you need to go in SQL Server network configuration if you wanted to change the TCP IP uh, static port or dynamic port of SQL Server and you will see these three protocols you need to double click on TCP IP and click on IP addresses as soon as, soon as you see the, all these IP addresses you can go all the way at the bottom and you will see IP all where SQL Server is listening to right now so right now it's listening on uh, TCP IP dynamic port 62819 and right here is the static port that if we wanted to configure to SQL Server static port what we would do is we will delete this entry and put a static port here but let's go ahead and do the static port first and then we will play with the dynamic ports. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I don't want my SQL Server to listen to dynamic port, so I want static port. Right here is my 9221. That is my uh, TCP IP static port for my SQL Server. Keep in mind, anytime you change SQL Server port, you have to restart SQL Services. So it will tell you right then. So if you hit apply, that that was the message that you need to restart the SQL services in order to in order for this port to take effect so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and go to the SQL services and select the particular instance that you just changed the port of right click and restart All right, let's go ahead and take a look one more time that what is our port 9221. So let's use this port to connect to SQL Server. We can use IP address and port to connect to SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. So what we're going to do is this is my IP address right here and I'm going to go ahead and put the port number and that is with right here comma port number IP address comma port number this is how you connect with SQL Server uh, using port number and IP address so let's go ahead and connect and we are connected using this port right here 9221 now we have made sure that SQL Server is using static port which is 9221 and not using dynamic port so let's go ahead and disconnect and we're gonna go back to our configuration and we're going to go ahead and take this static port out and we're gonna go ahead and say zero which means if we define TCP IP TCP dynamic ports zero you SQL Server have uh, now SQL Server will make decision what port it can take and it can take any port and let's say let's go ahead and apply this and we'll restart the services and then we will come back and see what port SQL Server is listening to click OK and let's go in the services restart as you notice when we did the static and we restarted the SQL services it didn't change the port 
So let's see that after restart the services, what port do we get? So we'll go back to the protocol, go to the properties, and go all the way down. And this is the port that SQL Server has grabbed. So SQL Server uh, is using now TCP IP dynamic port uh, 6285. So let's go ahead and copy this. And let's try to connect with 9221, which is not our static port anymore. So we should get an error for the connection. All right, we got error. So we're going to go ahead and use what SQL Server is using at this moment. So we got connected using the current SQL Server that it's using right now. Let's go ahead and restart the services just to see what will happen. Let's go back to our TCP IP, go all the way down. It's using 62885 that we had. Now let's say that this is not the dynamic port that we want SQL Server and we have decided that uh, we want SQL Server to use dynamic port but we don't want 62885. Then we can go ahead and define right here 9222. This is the dynamic port I want my SQL Server to use since I've decided to use TCP IP dynamic port. So hit apply, click OK, and right click. I'm sorry, go to services, right click, and restart. And we should be able to use that port. To connect to SQL Server. So let's go grab this port, go back to our management studio and use this port and we should be able to connect. So basically this is it. This is how you configure SQL Server to use static port and dynamic port and if you wanted to specify your own dynamic port then you don't you do need to write uh, that port in dynamic port uh, section of uh, um, IP all uh, if if you leave the zero then SQL Server can pick a dynamic port on its own and I hope this video helps